Welcome to spring, where you perform the annual ritual of asking your soil, are you alive in there yet? And today's video, I'm going to give you 25 rapid fire soil science-based tips on what you need to do in the spring to your garden before you plant. Because like any good relationship, there's a little bit of pre-work that has to go into both yourself and your future loved one. And in this case, it's soil. And if you're part of the geek crew, you probably love soil. So here we go. Okay, so before you start throwing things at your soil, like a teenager with a new skincare routine, you wanna do some testing of your soil. And this can come in many shapes and sizes. You could be testing the temperature. You could be testing the pH. You could test the nutrients as well. And I'm not talking sending this stuff away. I'm talking doing at-home tests. And I've done videos on all of these concepts. So just type in gardening in Canada plus sign soil pH, soil microbe, you name it. And the video for testing that will pop up in the search. I don't even know what happened here, but tip number two is removing debris like this. It can contain disease. So if you have the fruit, the tuber, or the plant stalk of a plant you know you had issues with, remove it ASAP. Absolute pro tip here, it's powdery mildew. If you had powdery mildew last year, get rid of the plant debris that contained that powdery mildew right now. The next one is topping with compost. So what you wanna do is remove what was mulched last year, if it's present, put it off into a pile on the side, and this will do a number of different things. It'll act as a mulch, it will actually leach nutrients downward, it will help maintain moisture, which then maintains microbes. There's a plethora of different reasons for this, but it is definitely a trick you should try. You don't have to put a lot, don't overdo it. Half an inch to an inch is just fine. That's all you need. If you don't have compost or you just simply wanna switch things up because switching up the source of your organic material is always a good idea, try manure. More specifically, aged manure. Fresh manure will hurt your nostrils and burn your plants. You don't want that. You want aged manure. So if it's in a bag, it's probably aged. And the reason we know that is because if it wasn't, the bag would be like me two years ago, double XL sized. So if it's in a bag, it's fine. If it's from a garden center and it's bulk, just make sure she's not hot. And that goes for compost too. If it's warm, do not put it anywhere. It means it's still curing, it's still composting. You don't want it anywhere near your soil. Next tip is actually biochar. Biochar, if you did not know, science has shown it to kind of be like a microbe and a nutrient hub. And this comes down to the surface area that biochar actually contains for both the microbes and the nutrients. It has a higher cation exchange capacity, which means it can hold on to more nutrients. And that extra surface area just very simply means that it's able to house a lot of microbes. It's like a big apartment complex. You don't want to mix in too much though, because it can be toxic. So don't do that. And you just want to top dress it. Just mix it in with that compost. Beds without perennials. Try this. I promise you, you will thank me for it later if you have a weed problem. And that is sheet mulching. What this means is you're going to take cardboard, burlap, literally anything that is decomposable, or you could use some fabrics out there, but make sure the fabric is permeable to water because not all landscape fabrics are and your plants will die because they won't get moisture unless you have the water lines running underneath it. But literally take the sheet of whatever mulch you've decided on and put it on your bare beds and leave it there until you go to transplant or sow your seeds. When you go to transplant or sow your seeds, make a hole in the top of that sheet mulch and plant the plant in that space. This has a major effect on weeds and it suppresses them big time. And we want them suppressed because they compete for nutrients and light against your plants and we don't want them to. So yeah, sheet mulch. It's an absolute glorious hack. And you can like cover it up and fake like it's not there with like pretty wood chips or straw. Don't get me wrong, it's very easy to hide. It's the fact that it's present. Just say it's way more effective than just regular mulch. Number seven is going to be one that many of you don't agree with. But if you've been on this channel for any length of time, you know that I believe that every form of food production tool that has been used has a purpose and an application to it. And so I'm just gonna spit it out tillage and or just airing the soil out. When it comes to spring, you air out your mattress, maybe your 
duvet cover, whatever the case is, turns out your soil could be aired out as well. You can use an aerator, a pitchfork, you can use a broad fork. All of these are considered tillage, despite the fact that the no-till community will tell you that that is a no-till method. It is tillage. Anytime you're disrupting the soil, you're tilling it, don't shoot the messenger. If you use a rototiller, say you have a really heavy clay, you can amend it using sand, which doesn't cost cement. Think of our ancestors. If clay and sand made cement, we'd have brick freaking roads all over the place. And we don't because it doesn't make cement. But sand and organic material can easily amend a clay soil. And this is the time to do it, obviously, before you plant your plants. My only kind of warning here, do it while the ground is wet because it will settle heavily compacted and we obviously don't want that so we want things to dry out slightly and obviously be thawed as well speaking of aeration my dogs help me aerate my soil every single year like clockwork here's one of my aerators right now however it results in an uneven soil distribution which can affect the hydrology which results in poor watering or pooling water in spaces you don't want pooling water i digress all you want to do is take a rake a landscape rake and make sure you flatten things out as much as possible and get rid of the divots. I, I, I know. Oh, yes. Life is hard. Life. Why is he so hard to be? A, it's hard to be a puppy dog. He's a sucker baby. This one is a sucker baby. Go, go aerate the soil. Oh, yeah. Go aerate the soil. He's like, I don't want to because he put me in the bath last time and I hate water. You do, don't you? Okay, okay, okay. This one's oddly specific to those of you that have like an orchard, a lot of trees, rubbery, that sort of thing. And this time of year is actually the best time to spread some of your mycorrhizal fungi if you have it. Now, I knock on mycorrhizal fungi when it comes to garden plants in particular. However, if we're talking permanent structures like a tree, it actually does have some benefits. Just make sure you use a very generic form of mycorrhizal fungi, which is the Actinomyces version, which is pretty much all major brands use that one. But yeah, just sprinkle it on the surface or even better yet, sprinkle it on the surface and then top dress that with like a mulch or a manure, something to keep it not exposed to sun and also just moisture and that sort of thing. This here looks crazy and it is, and it's not being done right currently. If you watch my video on heating soil, this needs to be on the ground, nice and tight to the ground like a tiger not like this not not flowing beautifully but regardless use a tarp and actually warm your soil up it helps with seed germination rates it helps with transplant and reducing shock doesn't help with airplanes though no not those are still gonna very irritatingly fly over my head again all freaking summer there's a dead bird right there yeah the next one actually i've never really spoken about but it's definitely something you can use and is actually used on like a production scale of food production and that is green manure so it's exactly as it sounds it involves taking a plant of some sort that is cheap seed so usually it's going to be like a pea or a bean of some sort, you're going to sow it relatively densely onto your soil surface. And what this will do, because they tend to grow well in cooler soils, they will germinate, they will then suppress weeds, they will wake up the soil in and around the rhizosphere, which is like a whole concept of plant roots, releasing in the exudates, kind of calling in the microbes and the microbes becoming more active when the exudates are released. And then all you do, you would put it like where you're going to plant your tomatoes. And then you just like, you literally chop it down before you go to sow the tomatoes or transplant or whatever the case is. And typically you would leave the greenery in place and utilize it as a mulch or what you could do is actually compost it but i would prefer you to leave it in place because that's kind of the purpose of it next up is setting up your irrigation it's boring let's just say that however irrigation particularly drip irrigation is a major hack when it comes to even water supply even nutrient supply and so yeah that one drip irrigation get that set up now because it's just one of those things that isn't fun and you might as well do it while things are ugly anyways. Now, if you don't have raised beds and you are gardening in ground, actually go get some mulch. It could be sheet mulch, it could be regular mulch, just something to mark out the pathways of your garden. The reason for this is because you walking across the soil, as silly as it sounds, will cause compaction and it will cause compaction even more so 
right now this time of year because the soil is really wet and wet soil compacts even easier than any other form of soil. Speaking of drainage issues and compaction, take a look at your land. Well, if you're in Canada, it's probably, it's not your land. You know what? I'm not gonna touch that one with a 10 foot pole. I digress. What you wanna do is take a lay of the land. Look at where there's pooling water, look at where things are really dried out already, and then use that information while things are kind of figuring their way out when it comes to hydrology, and then take the necessary steps to correct it. So if you've got a divot that has pooling water, you can amend that as I spoke about before with tillage and some amendments that will break that aggregation up a little bit. You can also consider using something like a tillage radish, which does exactly what it sounds like. It helps with basically drilling down and making that space easier for drainage. If you've got a high spot, the high spot is looking a little bit dry. Your only real work around this is either a lot of mulch or actually leveling it out as much as possible. If you have slug or snail issues, pots, lights, decor, wood, rock, anything that is covering the soil, remove it. Get rid of the hiding spaces as soon as possible so they really have no desire to be in your yard. Whether you're sowing these for your green manure or maybe you're sowing them for just an early harvest, because let's face it, beans, peas do great in that situation, get some rhizobia bacteria and actually inoculate these seeds. You'd be shocked how well it works. The only tip I have for you though is they are sensitive to light. So you wanna do this on a cloudy day is when you want to plant these if you inoculate them and or like at night time something like that or an, under an umbrella seriously I'm not even joking when I used to do field research I did quite a bit actually on inoculant rhizobia in particular and uh, yeah no and we used to sit in the back of trucks with like covers in plus 40 rubbing seeds in the dark I wish I was joking I'm not yeah so yeah they're photosensitive just be careful, but it works wonderfully. Start a soil journal. That has to be my number one hack. Record the results, your pH results, your microbe results, your soil temperatures this time of year. When you're officially getting into the garden and planting, if what you planted work, keep a journal because every single year you will be able to find patterns based on what mother nature was doing during the winter or how your spring has been rolling out and you will become that much more efficient. Even if it's 1% better, if you intend to garden for the next 30 years of your life, will help you elevate your game when it comes to becoming a true geek crew gardener. So I'm gonna talk to you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Sharing is scary. Anyways, bye.